Hi, I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I have a project updates video for you. Um, last week I shared about my passport pullover and it was kind of like a design spotlight video. And so I will, I will link that up here for you. <laughs> but this week I'm back to regular project updates. So I have um, a finished object, some new works in progress, and some acquisitions. I actually have two sets of acquisitions today. Um, so that's exciting. <laughs> and if we haven't met before, my name is Hannah. I am a, a mom and a knitter, and um, I design patterns for children. And I like to share my projects here on YouTube and then also on Instagram. I do have a newsletter too you can sign up for. Currently, I'm just using that mostly for pattern launches and um, subscriber discounts, but I'm hopeful that um, I will in the new year. <laughs> I know it's just September, but I'm thinking in January, I'm planning to like revamp that and have it more of like what I'm working on, what trends I'm seeing, that kind of thing as a way to just connect more with with you guys. Um, as you can see, I'm not wearing wool today. The weather actually has been um, cooler in the mornings and only about like 85 degrees in the um, in like the afternoons when it's hitting the peak. So that has been really nice. I'm actually wearing linen. Um, this is not like an ad or, or sponsored or anything, but um, Not Perfect Linen has a brand called Two Is Enough. Um, it's really popular on Instagram. I don't know about on YouTube, but um, anyway, they, they reached out and very kindly sent me some pieces from their, their new Two Is Enough, which is like a kind of like a capsule wardrobe initiative. Um, and so I have this, this lovely top. And then they also sent, I don't, I thought I had it. They also sent a jacket, which is really beautiful and a pair of pants in the same color. So um, that is what I'm wearing today. It felt like a little bit adjacent because it's still in like the slow fashion, ethical fashion kind of thing where knitting is also very much a slow making, um, slow, slow fashion. So anyway, um, yes, that is what I'm wearing today. Um, Okay, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, my first finished object, I will put a picture up of it. Um, I finished a hat for my husband and it is sitting on the carpet right now, but it's super wet. I think it's just the wool that I used, but I blocked it last night and it is, I thought it would be dry. It's not dry at all. <laughs> I picked it up to move it and it just like, you know how when you like pick something up that's still blocking and it just goes like it all stretches out. So it definitely did that, um, which is fine. It's okay. I just reshaped it a little bit, but I made my husband a hat out of Kelborn Woolen's Lucky Tweed. I don't think I shared it on here, but basically it's the same hat I made myself and my son. Um, we're taking a trip soon. And so I wanted to make us all new hats for our trip. And originally I wanted to make us all like the same color hat. And then my son wanted a blue hat. I did not want a blue hat. I don't think my husband would really wear like a bright blue hat either. And so then I was like, you know what? Let's just all pick a color we want. My husband's is this lovely black tweed. The yarn is from Freeman's Creative and yes, it's Kelborn Woolens. And they actually have a Kelborn Woolens trunk show there right now. So lots of beautiful samples. Um, I personally love, love Kelborn Woolens yarn, um, but I haven't really branched out besides like Scout. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I think I will hopefully get to go while they still have all their samples there so I can see, you know, what, what they made with them. Anyway, um, yes, I'll put a picture up. It's just a basic hat, brioche. I didn't use a pattern or anything. Um, okay. I don't think I have any other finished objects, but I do have some major updates on one of my works in progress. So that is my Gowan cardigan. Um, I finished one of the sleeves. So I have been working on this for quite some time. And I think I shared that I had finished, mm, I don't know if I shared that I finished the body. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sharing it now. I finished the body and one of the sleeves and it looks really short right now. Um, but I think it's just because the body is so oversized and then the sleeve tapers very quickly to be like very, very small. Um, trying to think. I seamed the sides, which was amazing. Can you tell there's a seam? No. I mean, maybe, but I can't. My husband couldn't tell. Um, but if you look at the inside, you can obviously see it. 
Um, but this is my first time seaming a garment. I think you can see it. Anyway, this was my first time seaming a garment. It was super easy, it was super satisfying. <laughs> but like, why don't I see more? I know why I don't see more. It was not super fun to knit this all flat, but it was super fun to seam it together and just like pull the, I did a mattress stitch. And so when you pull it and it all comes together and it's like seam, well, it looks seamless and beautiful. So I'll try this on and show you um, kind of where it's at. I'm taking a risk here doing this live, but um, here we go. So this is the sleeve I finished. It is a little short, but I'm really thinking it's gonna grow with blocking based on how the um, sweater itself grew when I blocked it. So if I haven't heard me talk about this, I made the first size because I wanted a little less ease than recommended. Um, Sorry, all my yarns are connected to this one. <laughs> um, and then I made the size two sleeves and like underarm length, or size three sleeves and underarm length because I wanted more uh, room here. So yes, I'm really happy with it. I don't have buttons yet. Um, and then this sleeve looks like it's almost done. I do think this will grow a lot. That's my goal with blocking. Um, both ways, but the pattern is designed to have like a more fitted sleeve um, and a looser overall body But I feel like I'm like I need to wear my glasses when I wear this like I feel like I'm very it's very like professory almost like Academic vibes. Um, I think it will depend on the buttons I choose. But anyway, I'm almost done. I'm really excited um, Yeah, I'm hoping to finish it up this week but I don't know We'll see. There's a few other things going on um, that I need to, to work on. Okay, so now I have kind of a sad progress update. It's not really sad. <laughs> there are a lot sadder things out there. Um, but I talked about this as like my trip sweater um, not too long ago. This is a Sela sweater by Line and Magazine. They're doing a knit along right now. Um, and I was super excited about it. I made it with my peace fleece worsted and I had this whole saga of like it smelled kind of bad because it had just been bagged up for a long time um and I ended up washing it I washed the sweater the smell's gone super exciting and then so I split for like the sleeves and the body and everything and I tried it on and it's just too big for me for what I was looking for um like I'm really happy with you know how the yarn worked up my modifications to include like the dip stitch I really like all of that, but it just, it was just too big for what I wanted. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to frog it, <laughs> which is a little bit sad, but I think this would still be lovely as like a um, cardigan, or not a cardigan, like a slipover. I think this would be a beautiful slipover um, or even like a, like a button up vest. Um, I think it's the right weight for the building blocks drop cardigan version by Amy Scher. I also might just frog it and let it sit for a very long time because I did go through like the whole saga of like washing it and letting it dry and then trying to see if this would fit and I just think the ease was just too much. I should have measured like how much like 12 inches of ease would look like on me for what I was going for for this particular sweater. So I think it was just me not choosing the correct pattern for what I wanted. So anyway, I'm not bringing this because it's not done. <laughs> um, and I'll probably frog it. I can't decide if I'm gonna keep the yarn or just like add it to my de-stash. Although now it's all been like knit up. And so I'm like, uh, do I just like, I don't know, it really looks like my brother-in-law. Caleb, if you're watching, do you want this yarn? <laughs> it really looks like you. Like I could see this as like a very, like handsome cabled slipover, I think would look really nice. Um, anyway, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I could keep it for myself and do like a, just like a, like a holiday slipover kind of vibe. Um, but I don't know, the gray sort of tweed is very beautiful, um, but also slightly academic, which apparently that might be my vibe based on my, my most recent cardigan, but um, I feel like I give off more like playground, um, like 
taking my toddler to music class five. So anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. It's just an update for you because, um, yeah, I talked about it and then I stopped talking about it, <laughs> which is a good sign that like something, something went wrong. And that is what went wrong. I, it's just too, too much ease. Okay. Now I have a swatch to show you. Um, I'm very excited about it. So a few weeks ago, I talked about my trip to Colorado with two of my dearest friends, and we um, did go to Fancy Tiger, which is a yarn shop in, in Denver. And I picked out some beautiful yarn, which I will grab. So I picked up some beautiful yarn that I love to use. This is Bovo by Rosa Palmar. And um, this is color Lamb. And then this is the color Toffee. So I bought all of the colors that they had and then in, in those colors. And then I also have at home this lovely pink and I think it's just called light pink, yep. And so I wanted to use the three of those colors together to make something um, special to remember my trip. And then I already have this at home. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna be using up yarn that I have because I have um, maybe two and a half of these left. And so anyway, I was looking for patterns. I asked you guys for patterns and I really appreciate your suggestions. I have, I think the limiting factor was just having enough yarn because I thought, okay, I'll just go home and buy more of this um, because this is like pretty available. Um, but then this color is sold out in a lot of places. <laughs> and so I think I need to do like a tea. Um, so I, I swatched for this nostalgia tea. And if it turns out that I have enough of the main color, then I'm just going to make the sleeves, but I'll start and like finish the body. And that way, if I don't have enough, I can just make it the T version, which is what it originally was supposed to be. So I feel excited about that, that I have a plan in place. Should I not have enough yarn, which seems to be the theme. I told myself I wasn't going to do that anymore, but to be fair, I did buy all of the white that they had. Um, and now I just can't find it online. So if you, if your store or you own <laughs> Bovo lamb, um, let me know. There's a lot of white, there's like natural and there's, maybe there's a cream, but I just haven't been able to find lamb. And it's not a super big deal again, like I said, because I think that my plan will work out. But this is the Nostalgia Tea by Bloom Create. I don't know why I swatched this flat. I don't know what I was thinking. I, my color dominance was like super, I was very confused about switching between knitting and purling. I'm like I should have just knit this in the round because it's knit in the round. And it's way easier for me to do color work in the round than flat. But for some reason, I just started it flat. And so I just finished it flat. It's okay. I did go down a needle size because the sweater is um, knit in fingering weight. And this is a light sport weight. But yes. So I think I might bring this on our upcoming trip. Although it might be a little difficult because it is all over color work. But it's not like a difficult color work to me. Um, this this is like a easily memorized pattern, um, and so I think I could I think I could handle this like on a pick up, put down, pick up, put down. I don't really have any other projects that are in a good place to bring that are like stockinette or just like an all over pattern repeat. Sort of reaching the end of a few projects, and so well, mostly just my big cardigan. <laughs> But I don't have like a small project to just bring with me to work on. Maybe I'll cast on a pair of socks. I did see Summerly Knits released like a slouchy sock and I think that is very cute. And so I might need that to bring that. I have lots of sock yarn just kind of in my yarn pantry. And so maybe that, <laughs> maybe I will bring that instead of this, but I really, really want to work on this. Um, I love the name Nostalgia Tea. I love the meaning behind the name that I'm gonna put together. It also kind of goes well with like, I bought the yarn when I was with two of my friends that I have known for a very long time and just kind of reflecting on our, you know, how we became friends and how our friendship has gone for so many years. Um, that has been really special. And so, and also the memories we made on that trip. So having it be like the nostalgia tea with yarn I bought when I was with them, I think that would be really special. Um, okay. 
Now I have acquisitions to share with you. This is my first. So to be fair, I did not buy either of these acquisitions. Um, my mom and sister kindly gave me this yarn. It has been um, a difficult week, few weeks um, at my house and um, just in our little family. And so I, I'm not gonna share about that here, but you can always DM me and say hi or whatever. But um, yeah, maybe, maybe one day, but not today. Um, and so anyway, um, they dropped this off just to say, thinking about you and um, love you and here's some yarn to make you feel a little bit better. And so that was very kind of them. And um, my sister and I had seen this yarn at Great Yarns. It's from Great Yarns in Raleigh. Um, and we had seen it before and we're like, how does this die up? Because, I mean, how does this knit up? Because if you look at it, it's very like, uneven I guess is the word but it's intentional the the weight is just very uneven like there's these little like fluffy parts um and it's a blown cotton and wool and so that's kind of like some places the the blown part is extra big and some parts it's just the tube um and so it's kind of fun but they ended up having a swatch this time I guess when my sister went and the swatch looked super cool and so I, I was like, oh yeah, that, I do like that. She sent me some pictures and she, she was gonna get some. And so I was like, yeah, I get it, I love it, it looks great. And then she ended up getting some for me. It's also um, like 75% off at the shop. So I don't know if it's not very popular or that kind of thing, but um, if you're in Raleigh, go check it out. They have lovely pink and white, beautiful colors. Um, so anyway, it is like extra bulky, I think, or bulky is, is what it is, but um I have she got they got me three of these and so I'm thinking like a Sophie scarf would be cute or yeah mostly that's what I'm thinking because it's about 300 and it's 330 yards and so I'm thinking like a Sophie scarf or a Sophie shawl or honestly the way this swatch worked up I feel like a just like a stockinette scarf would be really beautiful because it does have that texture like just by itself. So I'm definitely a scarf girl. I'm not a shawl girl, um, but I do love scarves. When I first started knitting again, I just knit a bunch of scarves because why not? And you just knit straight for a long time and <laughs> that is what my skill level was at. Um, so I might go back to my roots a little bit. Ooh, sorry, I might go back to my roots a little bit with this um, and just make something very simple and basic. But also maybe a Sophie scarf because it's a beautiful color and I feel like I have some things in this color. This is a good accent color for my wardrobe. And so maybe, maybe it would be a nice uh, scarf. I think that's what I'll do. And like the cotton merino, I feel like that's kind of airy. So it wouldn't get too hot. It doesn't get super cold here in the winter, um, but it does get cold enough to need like a scarf for sure with your coat. Okay, so that was my first acquisition. Um, very kindly sent over by my mom and sister. And then the second acquisition, I cannot tell you what it's for, but it's coming soon. I think it's like this video should come out on Saturday or Sunday. And then um, the, like the knit along or whatever will drop on Monday. So it will be a close, um, close call. But this is from Pearl Soho. They sent me um, two skeins of Cashmere Merino Bloom. Oh, so lovely. I've never used this yarn before um, and I am excited. So it's 75 merino, 25 cashmere, and this has 218 yards for 100 grams. So nice, that worsted, worsted weight. And I have the color Wheat Flower and Warm Honey. So I'm planning for these to be gifts. I'm really liking these a lot. Um, so they have a knit along coming up and um i will be i'll be working with these i think i might bring this actually on our trip because i can wind it up and it is an easy pick up and put down i don't know if i've talked about it a ton maybe just like a little bit when i gave like an update on on just hannah hannah g knits um but i won't have a video in for a couple weeks 
just because we'll be out of town um, and I want to just like kind of be focused on that. Um, but we'll be visiting some family um, in Europe and then also just taking some time for the three of us, my husband, my son and I to enjoy um, just like eating a lot of croissants and um, <laughs> drinking hot chocolate, wandering around, hopefully finding some carousels for my son to ride on, um, lots of playgrounds and parks and just enjoy time with the three of us. Um, I've mentioned we've had a little bit of a difficult season and so I think it will be really nice to just spend time doing nothing or doing everything. Hopefully we all adjust well to the time difference and um, all of those things. And hopefully it's wonderful. <laughs> we will see. Um, but anyway, so I've been thinking about what to pack for our trip. It's gonna be colder than where we are here. And so I made us all hats, but then also what can I work on while we're there? And I don't know that I'll have a lot of time because like I will also be, you know, um, just focused on like being in the moment, parenting, um, focus on just being present with my little family. And so I think um, this would be a little difficult, but I'm I'm still really wanting to bring it. <laughs> I don't know, I have like a test net as well that I'm planning to get yarn for while I'm there. And so I think I might need to like bring the needles to swatch for that and then get started on that um, while I'm there. So that could be my sweater I bring and then maybe I'll bring this for just like an easy comfort knit. Maybe that, maybe that, I'll do that. Um, anyway, I think that's all I have today. Another short, short episode, but um, hopefully I'll have a lot of acquisitions for you in the coming weeks because um, I'm hoping to purchase some, some yarn. Um, yeah, that's part of the reason I have been trying to knit through all the yarn in my yarn pantry is I'm planning to do some restocking. Not a lot, um, because I've learned this year I might rather just buy yarn when I want to versus getting out of my yarn pantry um but i have been researching some yarn shops that i'm hoping to go to and and look at the yarn so we'll see but i'm hoping to have some yarn to show you um in a couple of weeks so anyway happy knitting um i hope you have a lovely weekend see you next time